All right, welcome back. We're still doing AP Physics 2 with National Math and Science Initiative for video professional development. This is part C of our second module on circuits. We're going to talk about capacitance. Uh, my name's John Friendsley. You've seen it plenty of times already. You're going to see it like 23 times, so you might as well get to know my name. I'm the guy in the purple shirt. I'm thinking about whether I want to change shirt colors for different modules. I haven't decided quite yet how I want to handle that. Prosper High School, out on the Western Plain and Prosper, Texas. All right, here's what students got to be able to do with regards to capacitors. They got to understand how a capacitor is constructed, how a capacitor works, how a capacitor stores energy, explain what aspects of the capacitor's construction affects the capacitor's capacitance. Okay, they got to explain qualitatively, that's just with words and basic, you know, that kind of thing, how capacitors behave in circuits. Um, what do I mean by that? I mean like when capacitors are combined in series, they make a lower capacitance. Uh, when they're combined in parallel, they make a higher capacitance. The capacitor starts when it has no charge, and the charge flowing through it acts like a wire or a closed switch. The capacitor acts like an open switch when it's fully charged. When the capacitor's discharging, acts like a battery, that kind of qualitative. Um, how the construction of the circuit affects the capacitor's charging and discharging time. Bottom line, the more resistance, the longer it takes to charge and discharge. The more capacitance, the longer it takes to charge and discharge. All right, so I start my students with a capacitor demonstration. By this point, I will have already explained building a capacitor, what a capacitor does, and that kind of thing. So I, if I were you, I would get a one farad super capacitor for this. Um, the Jameco item number is right here. You can freeze the video and buy it. Um, less than $4 each. I ordered $10. Um, Okay, you also need enough batteries to make four and a half volts, two small little light bulbs and switches and connecting wires for this. So I build two circuits and for my students, I build one circuit and then later the other. Okay, so first I'm gonna build circuit A, which is battery, switch one, bulb one, and then we split into parallel, switch two and bulb two in parallel. That's circuit A. Circuit B is almost the same circuit, still switch, uh, still battery switch one, bulb one, but when we split into parallel, no switch two, a capacitor instead, and bulb two. So the key difference is switch two gets replaced with a capacitor. That's the key difference. All right, let's start with circuit A. This is a conversation you better have with your students unless they are masters of circuits. You need to make them say, okay, what happens if switch one is open and switch two is open? Well, no current can flow, the light bulbs are off. Switch one is open and switch two is closed. Well, you still need switch one closed for anything to happen. Switch two is closed and switch two is open. The current has to run around the outside, so both bulbs are going to be lit but if you close switch two, then the charges will shortcut past bulb two, short circuit, and bulb one will be the only one lit and it'll be much brighter because there's more current and the charges are dropping off all their energy at bulb one. Make them make those predictions before you show it to them. Then you show it to them and then here's the question. So now you're gonna set up, after that conversation, circuit A, you're gonna set up circuit B. You're gonna close the switch and you're gonna make the students say, what does a capacitor act like? Uh, I'm gonna show it to you here in a moment, but let me just tell you what's going to happen. When the switch is closed, bulb one will be bright and the only one lit, just like when switch two is closed. But over time, when the capacitor becomes full, then bulb one will dim and bulb two will light up until they're equally dim, just like when switch two is open. So what you're about to see is that the capacitor acts like an Close switch when it begins to charge, acts like an open switch when fully charged. All right, so let's have a look at that. Oh, and by the way, when you open the switch in circuit B, bulb two is still lit as the capacitor discharges. The capacitor acts like a battery. That's what we want to show the students. Okay, so let's show that to the students. Well, let's show it to you so you can show it to the students right now.